Electric Utility Services. Uh, today we take up the lecture 13 which is titled Glare. Now having learnt about the need for lighting and having known how the artificial sources can be employed for light and having also understood how to go about measuring these things and how various quantities with reference to lighting are mentioned, we had a look at various lighting installations that is uh, what form illumination systems. Now there is a need before we look at specific applications of lighting systems to see what else can affect our uh, efficacy as far as lighting goes and that is being addressed in today's lecture which is titled glare. Therefore, the instructional objectives have been defined glare, the first one that is what the glare is and in fact recall that we mentioned as far in the lecture on the eye that any bright object in the line of vision tends to obscure our vision probably first and foremost it deters us from observing what we are supposed to observe. Secondly, it may injure the eye or cause fatigue in the eye and this bright source of light in the line of vision is what we call glare. So, the first thing we look at is define glare and then we have a look at the various types of glare that are possible that is why the second objective has been listed as list types of glare. The third objective is what is the effect of these glare? Well, we say there is a bright source of light in the light of line of vision. Primarily it obscures the vision, but then there are secondary effects. The third objective tries to look at those secondary objectives, secondary effects. Now having said what the glare is, what the glare types are and the effects of the glare, it becomes necessary from an engineering point of view to understand for a particular installation how do we uh, evaluate the glare or what kind of uh, indices can we put for measuring. In fact, we said anything that needs to be understood needs to be measured and quantified and that is where this comes handy. Therefore, the next objective is various glare indexes and in fact, the objective 5 is listed as how is glare evaluated. This tries to compare the various systems that are available and the more commonly used system is elaborated. And having done come up to the evaluation level, the next important thing is to understand the measures that can be adapted to see that the glare is not there and therefore the objective is listed as measures to reduce the glare. So, we look at glare. What did we say? Glare is, glare is the brightness within the field of vision. That is by definition any bright source in the field of vision that is in the line of vision, in the plane of vision, the eye level is what we call glare. What does it do? It causes discomfort. We are all experienced a bright uh, headlights of a automobile coming in the opposite direction in fact blinds you. 
there is a temporary blindness and there is a lot of discomfort, it annoys you because you may be oriented towards particular direction, you may be locating a particular address and in this process the your objective is disturbed, it is annoyed and if continued for a longer time, it causes a fatigue in the optical muscles which we call as eye fatigue and therefore, glare not only uh, uh, does make vision blinded or temporary blindness, it reduces the visibility of an object. The primary effect as we say is the reduction in the visibility of an object, but associated with that we have discomfort to the eye. It creates an annoyance in the mind primarily because the objective to towards which you have been working gets distorted and there is obviously if there are conflicting bright sources, the there could be interference and may not result in eff effective uh, vi uh, visualization of the object. And incidentally, the most common fault with the lighting installations that have been designed is the glare design. That is to say that not much care is given to glare. This is because the all engineering aspects are not taken into account randomly the lamps are placed and as a result the location may create bright sources in the plane of vision. Having learnt what glare is and having looked at what it could be doing that is the bright sources in the field of vision causing discomfort or reducing the visibility is what we call as glare and is the common. What are, what are other effects? If we look at the gamut of effects that it can have, the first thing is it could injure the eye. If persistent bright source or of intense magnitude is incident on your human eye, it can injure the eye and associated with dust is the, the nervous system gets disturbed and leads to a lot of discomfort and in trying to adjust to intense bright light, there can be fatigue in the optical muscles. What does this all do? All this leads to what we call the reduction in the efficiency and as a result, it leads to interference with the clear vision. Obviously, when all this happens, it may not be possible for the person to know any obstructions in the path of his activity. Say for instance, you are working at a machine and you have a bright light coming uh, into your eyes as a result any object moving in the task space may not be visible to you because of this intense bright light coming in the line of vision and there could be an accident that is accident risk increases considerably in the presence of glare. This has to be borne in mind. Now, when does one experience glare? We said whenever light is bright in the plane of vision is then we call it glare. So, how do we experience? We experience from lamps, naked lamps which is a common practice with most domestic users. Then windows, open windows when the bright light comes into them. Then poorly designed luminaries and other areas. Now, there is another condition that it occurs when these lamps, windows, luminaires or any space is 
in the work environment much brighter than general brightness. We did mention that the certain general brightness is required in any environment and the gradation there is a certain proportion ratio between the two brightness necessary so that one does not have glare. Now, if that be the case, what are the types of glare? The glare can be classified into two categories, one direct, other reflected glare. So, if you directly place observer in the plane of bright light or if you look at a naked lamp of high wattage directly you can experience glare. The reflected glare is this particular light flux getting reflected from another surface. It could be furniture, it could be walls, it could be any other object in the environment. The, therefore, we see the direct glare is presence of bright luminaire or the lamp system in the field of vision, whereas reflected glare is reflection of light from such a source from a glassy surface and in fact, it is observed that such a reflection may not be intense, but it is much more annoying than direct glare. In fact, direct glare being intense may make us close our eyes involuntarily, but this not being of sufficient level, it may uh, what you call create annoyance. Okay. So, we need to avoid these, this can be done by a proper choice of interiors that is we maintain complete interior of a system very well may, uh, prepared considering reflection factors and try to see that very little bright light gets reflected and causes any glare. The direct glare, the best way to minimize or avoid direct glare is never have lamps brought up to the eye level. That is, you mount the luminous or the illumination system well above the line of vision or field of vision. In the process, we reduce brightness and light flux in the normal field of view. Talking of illumination systems, we did mention use of fluorescent lamps for low bay industrial lighting and discharge lamps of high power or halogen lamps for high bay lamps. Remember, uh, naturally the envelope of a fluorescent lamp is diffusing in nature and there is very little the glare levels are much lower that is how one could see the application of scientific basis of reducing direct glare. The disability glare I mean glare could be further graded disability means whenever a person experiences glare if it impedes the vision altogether that is when it is called disability glare. If it is very bright and exposed for a long time then it could cause disability of the vision and that is when it is called disability glare. As opposed to this there could be discomfort which is very common and the amount of discomfort depends on time of exposure. How do we distinguish between discomfort glare and disability glare? The discomfort glare is a temporary discomfort 
but there is no reduction in the visual ability of the eye, but only gives fatigue which upon some amount of rest gets reduced. Now, when we say we are trying to look at gradation of the glare, there, there we classified as direct or reflected as opposed to dip this depending on the brightness and depending on the effect it can have we can call it disability glare, discomfort glare, annoyance glare. That means the level of discomfort or level of reduction in efficiency or reduction of the visibility is lower in discomfort glare compared to disability glare. The annoyance is essentially means that it is more than the general brightness luminance in the system in the environment and causes some discomfort very marginal which comes in the way of efficient working, but it does not really affect the vision to that extent. This in order to quantize one looks at what is known as solid angle subtended by the lamp at the observer's eye in the field of view. In the normal field of view, it says field of view here, but I must say it is the normal field of view. So, all this brings to situation where glare needs to be quantized which you can call as glare evaluation system or glare indices that is what we look at. So, what we had taken care so far was what glare is and what it does to our eyes, how one experiences glare and how it can be classified. For the purpose of evaluation, one of the simple systems is the American system which is followed in entire North American continent is the visual comfort system or it is in fact abbreviated as VCP. It consists in looking at the number of people or the percentage of people who are comfortable in viewing a particular installation from the opposite end. That is, if you have a set of illumination system and you directly look at the illumination system in the line of normal line of vision and depending on the number of a large number of people, let us say 50 people or 100 people and then say in fact, this is a subjective evaluation and based on this one gives the uh, what you call a VCP index. Now, as opposed to this there are other systems which have tables depending on the layout of the rooms, proportions that is height to space length uh, this thing what you call height to length ratios and other systems which work on the figure of merit. Now, in fact, in applying VCP of an, a source of 1000 lumens is taken as a base source from a luminaire and in this system if 70 percent of the people say it is comfortable that is when VCP is about 70 percent it may be said that it is glare free. Now, as we go along when we look at the other systems I said there could be tables. Now, tables are based on two indices one is the task illuminance we had already seen from the vision perspective there is a certain illuminance level required for a particular task and in order to do that you can 
very well see higher the luminous flux higher will be illuminance on the task surface and therefore there is every chance of the lamp being bright and there are there is scope for glare that is what is to be seen so therefore let us see how other systems are there in order to do this the british method in fact talks in terms of zones and they have classified the application and thereby they have come up with a glare index the as opposed to this we have the australian system which depends on the luminance limit system remember illuminance is the effect of light on the task surface whereas luminance is brightness of the source and illuminance was measured in terms of lumens per meter square or lux whereas brightness or luminance is measured in terms of candela per meter square also recall that lumen output of a lamp is talked in terms of a polar curves which not necessarily lamp lamp together with luminaire luminaire in fact tries to control and direct and modify these curves so you have luminance curves and therefore this system which we are calling luminance limit system it specifies for a particular height to width ratio what is the kind of a limit that can be there and the appropriate installation is compared with that the we consider uh, depending on the room dimensions mounting height and taking a base lamp you remember the base lamp we talked about was 1000 lumens then there has been a shielding angle specified in fact this shielding angle decides what will be the solid angle subtended the eye beyond which it will create glare now trying to understand what is this radiant zone of a luminaire let us look at this picture this picture shows a person at work on a table and the width of the space is around a units and as you can see the topmost line indicates the plane of luminaires where there are five sets of luminaires located 1 2 3 4 5 and the height of this plane from the plane of vision or from the line of vision as can be seen is hs now i told you there is a critical angle we talk of shielding angle and as far as this system of zone of illumination is considered under the british system which has the upper and lower limits which are fixed as 45 degrees to 85 degrees now you can see the uh the zone clearly marked in the diagram in fact what we observe is that the plane of vision is a at about 1.2 meters this is the height at which a typically average person working has his plane of vision if he is sitting at a table so the critical angle which we said gamma can vary from a minimum of 45 to a maximum of 85 now we see the zone being defined based on obviously the uh luminaire plane is ending at luminaire 5 therefore gamma max is defined with respect to the a straight line coming from that luminaire to the i which is the gamma max now it should be 
less than 85. If it is more than 85, there is every scope for uh, creating trouble. In fact, based on this, what is called as a luminance curve system has been taken for the purposes of evaluation. It is a sort of standard in the European continent. Here, it may not be wrong to mention that the world famous uh, lighting company, the Philips, is in fact located in Europe and this could be in fact taken as the best way of evaluating. Now, we were talking about the quality class. The quality class is from the user's point of view, from the point of view of tasks. It could be A to E type. What do we mean by type? Type means if you have a lamp system where the, the lamp allows light. See, if you consider a incandescent lamp, a single incandescent lamp, it is like a point source which radiates light flux in all directions. Rarely it is used as a single lamp in real applications except at homes. The as opposed to this, it could be a matrix of lamps when it forms a kind of a plane of light or the next best which we use is the fluorescent lamps which are a line of line source of light. So, this is where the type comes into picture. It could have a luminous sites. Now, whenever these sites are greater than 30 mm, that is if you have four fluorescent lamps placed in a single luminar and you have a diffusing luminar placed, then you can find that light radiating in all four directions. We are saying it as sides because normally these kind of lamps, the light radiates only axially okay, as opposed to this and then it is said to be elongated whenever length by width is much greater than 2, which is the case for most fluorescent lamps. This is as far as the type. So, we need to look at the critical angle, which could be anywhere from 45 to 85. We could see the angle formed at the eye, whether it is in the critical zone. We saw how we can define a zone of illumination considering the plane of illumination and plane of I. Then comes the orientation. Now, the orientation of the light flux, there are two orientations which are possible. Now, the picture here shows a fluorescent lamp and there is one plane where you are looking at the light flux distribution is the plane parallel to length of the axis. This is what we call C0 to C180 plane. Here, I must again mention one thing. In open air applications, often times it is difficult to take care of the glare and most of the issues which we are talking about glare evaluation, glare limitation pertain to the interior lighting. And for most purposes, interior office lighting is using fluorescent lamps, which are predominantly line sources. So, we if we do not have sites illuminated, we said sites illuminated become important when the width is greater than 30 mm. Mostly, we have elongated type. As opposed to this, there could be a plane where we will be considered that is C90 to C270 plane that is the perpendicular to the length of the axis. So, we have the critical angle which could be should be bit I mean the zone of the thing between 45 to 180 uh, 45 to 85 and we also look at the type whether it has got luminous sites or not our sites are not effective, then the orientation whether along the axis or perpendicular to the axis, 
then one can look at the requirements. Now, here this table in fact, which is based on the British system talks about the luminance levels, the first column gives us the luminance levels and the last column talks about the various common lamps and gives the limit of the shielding angles. We find that this is the zone of illumination which enables glare free application. Now, let us see what these classification are. From the task point of view, class A means it is a very high quality task and that is needs good amount of illumination, there is good scope for glare too. B is high, C is medium for average day to day application, it is the C category which is applicable. D is low, low can be tolerated for short durations, but can be harmful over long durations and E is the very low. Now, here we must say that always we do not have uh, one set of lights taking care of all requirements in an environment. We said while talking about the illumination systems, there should be a general light in the environment which enables free movement and general thing. This apart depending on the task criticality, one has local lighting and in fact, we did mention depending on the nature of the task, we do have mechanisms to control the light flux too. And most of the times this light general light is predominantly light coming downwards. See the common practice is either to have lamps suspended from the ceiling if this roof height is very large or placed recessed in the roof. Now, the moment you have this there may be no scope for direct glare if they are mounted well above the line of vision. Well, though there is no direct glare, if the task requirement calls for high illuminance levels, the sources may be of high brightness in which case they can be potential sources of reflected glare. We take care of this by taking care of the what you call interiors we had mentioned earlier also. So, it is recommended that typical reflectance of 0.5 is advisable for walls or ceiling and about 0.25 for the furniture. Having said so much, it is important now to look at the most widely used luminance curve system or luminance limit curve system in trying to evaluate the glare of a place. How do we do that? First thing is remember we talked about the critical zone being between 45 to 85 degrees. So, from the manufacturers polar diagrams which we have, we determine the luminance of the source between 45 to 85. Source I said it means the installation in this case including the complete thing. Then determine the quality class and the illuminance required. Just now we talked about the quality class between A to E from very high to very low. Then we select the curve based on the class or level. We will show you little while from now we will see the various tables for various classes and the appropriate curves. Once we select the curve, we determine the maximum angle. Recall the diagram where we saw gamma max based on the length of the illumination plane and height of this plane from the eye level and 
we consider only that portion of the curve which is above 45 up to gamma max. Then compare this with the luminance curve obtained for the light system and if we find that illuminance given by the curve not illuminance luminance given by the curve is greater than the actual luminance then we say it is glare free obviously it means the source in the zone of illumination or zone of I, I zone is not going to be very bright and therefore it is glare free. This will be understood as we go along you see the this table compares all the systems. You have the American VCP system, British glare rating or glare index and the first column talks about the quality class and it also lists the illuminance levels. One observation to be made is as you go along to the lower classes, the illuminance levels are changing. This is for various levels of. Now, in fact, we find there is a curve letter mentioned. Now, this curve letter corresponds to the curve on the luminance limit curves to be shown. We will take that up. So, this is you have for all possible conditions. What do we observe? We observe that for the 5 classes we have considered for the illuminance levels varying from 300 to about 2000 lux it has been mentioned and accordingly we have the corresponding glare index according to the British system and the American VCP have been given. So, glare evaluation system as we see is one American which basically is VCP or visual comfort percentage. The British system is a glare index, the European is the luminance curve system and all this requires to consider the quality class A corresponding to very high quality lighting, B corresponds to high quality lighting, C is the medium quality, D is the low quality and E is very low. And once we do that and in fact for different illuminance levels the relationship between quality class and the limit curves are as shown. For instance, if we are looking at a service which requires high quality with 1000 lux then the curve to be used is B or as opposed to a 500 lux good quality uh, would require a curve D to be used in the luminance limit curve system. So, likewise you find that for different levels of illumination requirement these curves have been specified and as already told first and foremost is over the zone of illumination between the critical angles of 45 to 85 one determines the luminance of the system. Now, this diagram marked as diagram 1 shows the various luminance limit curves for various classes of illuminance as well as quality we saw curve letters are obtained from the tables which we have already seen and they are marked A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Incidentally, this applies to a plane along the edge of the, we talked about the orientation and with no side illumination. 
and the y axis here shows the angle gamma from 45 to 85. So, from the luminance uh, from the installation dimensions mounting height and the width one arrives at the gamma max. Let us say from the quality service requirement table we arrive at the requirement uh, or the curve to be used as D. And if you say the installation comes up with a gamma max of 65 degrees we find that the curve D is to be used in this diagram and it varies from say 9 C D approximately 65 cuts off for D around 8 C D per meter cube meter square to that is 8 into 10 power 3 onwards. Then we compare the actual luminance curve with this and if this curve between 45 to 65 having said that the gamma max is 65 is above the actual luminance curve then we say the installation is glare free. What we have here is a diagram 2 this is to be applied when we are having luminous sites just as we had uh, actually elongate I mean actually illuminated system we could have si uh, lamp system with sites illuminated whenever sites exceed about 30 mm that is when we say the type of illumination is with the site illumination too. So, this is where one thinks of using this. So, we have two diagrams the second is for site illumination systems. Now, here is some calculation which shows how the mounting height really affects the illuminance at a spot. Now, here you can see in this diagram there are two lamps placed one spaced 1 meter apart at a common height h and we are looking at the illuminance on the plane below the lamps at the points A, B, C, D and D prime. In fact, the distance between B to D would be about 0.25 meters between B, C would be 0.5 meters. Remember considering the symmetry of the system the illuminance at B and A would be same similarly illuminance at D and D prime would be same. The calculated values could be in terms of uh, the height are somewhat like this as you can see the by virtue of see if there were only one lamp illuminance would have been a maxima just right below the lamp. By the presence of two lamps we find it is a maxima around the midline. Now, as you can see these calculations are shown for your the variation with the variation of the height <coughs> and the relationships may be recalled these were got from the loss of illumination for illuminance at A and B and illumination at C in this way because and that at D or D prime is given by this. What do we observe in the process? We find if you rec have recall the table once again as the height is increasing the illuminance at just below the lamp is rapidly falling whereas quarter away 0.25 meters away it is falling somewhat moderately and it is very slowly coming down at the center. So, the mounting height does have an impact and therefore, as opposed to a single lamp when we mount a system of lamps above a combination effect 
could really give the required illuminance at the same time reduce the glare that is the idea of looking at this. As opposed to this we have glare coming from the windows. In fact, when we consider the sky with the overcast condi uh, conditions we find sky luminance can be thought to be about 2000 candela per meter square which corresponds to a horizontal illuminance of 10000 lux. The best way to prevent these is to have curtains, blinds and lowers. Now remember one of the things which can reduce this is to reduce the opening of windows. However, from another point of view of ventilation, it is not advisable to completely reduce the area of a window and therefore, instead of having wide windows, one may resort to having long narrow windows which helps in reducing. So, coming to the uh, reduction of this glare, you may have to locate the work plane away from a offending window. In fact, the glare from windows is often experienced by students in the classrooms where the black blood if directly in the light of bright light coming from the windows, uh, students are unable to see and no light is allowed to enter from the offending window that can be done with the help of a proper design of interiors. And the next thing is one has to have interiors with light decorative finishes around the opening so that any light entering is absorbed and is very little gets reflected and, and the reflections coming through the folded curtains is what we call wheeling reflections and it should be such that it is outside the task. These when they are reflected by a glossy surface or a semi matte surface they become very important. But one must say with all this there is a mild distraction which creates discomfort, but it does not really uh, what you call cause any damage or discomfort to the eye. The glare if it is on the task one has to look at the contrast and see that there are no loss of details. Now in total the glare is minimized by luminaires located carefully and seeing that they are never located in the forbidden zone and try to have more light from sideways at right angles to the direction of viewing and thirdly they should have large surface area low luminance. In fact, the calculation shown with two lamps has shown we could have if you have large number of lamps it is possible to get the more uniform illuminance on the work surface and for the same light output brightness per unit area can be reduced in the plane of vision. This is how we could do with uh, larger luminaires with low luminance and obviously work surface itself should have very little reflection and matte surface gives that. Now here we are talking about the contrast and this is what brings in contrast rendition factor and this is dependent on the task contrast visibility which is defined as the given emission to the sphere illuminance. Now, supposing we have a lamp providing equal luminous intensity in all directions, then that is known as sphere illuminance. Take any lamp, the total luminance if it was the only a point source 
that would be the spare luminance. And take the actual emission in the situation and this is what we call task visibility. Now, this is best, it is believed is best when observer views at an angle of 25 degrees to the vertical and this is considering one is looking at a task, this basically this circle with the dot shows that angle and observer is considered to be viewing a pencil task. In fact, it is believed that is the it is the most tenuous thing to look at a pencil task. So, in total the summary of this lecture could be glare is the brightness within the field of vision. The glare effects could be worst could be injuring the eye, nominally disturbs the nervous system, causes annoyance, discomfort and fatigue thereby reduces efficiency of work and interferes with clear vision leading to accident risk. The types of glare are direct glare when the bright luminaire is in the field of vision, reflected glare when it is reflected from a glassy surface, reflected glare causes more annoyance than direct glare though not harmful it creates interference. Direct glare is minimized by mounting luminous well above the line of vision. Disability glare is what impairs the vision which happens very rarely. Discomfort glare increases with the time of exposure and one is relieved after a period of rest. Glare evaluation systems comprise of American system which is visual comfort percentage, British system which talks about glare index based on the zone of illumination and the most prevalent European system is the luminance limit curves. Luminance curve limit looks for luminance angle between 45 to 85 and based on the curves one evaluates the glare. Glare from windows is always prevented by using curtains, blinds or lowells is of two types there could be reflected and wheeling reflection that is the light trying to percolate in between the curtain or blinds. Techniques for minimization of glare from luminaires never locate them in forbidden zone, increase the light from sides and employ low luminance but large surface area luminaires. Contrast rendition factor influences lighting on task contrast and task visibility which is defined as the given emission to the sphere illuminance and sphere illuminance being the source providing equal luminous intensity in all directions ESI. Three categories of lighting are important that is general lighting, local lighting and combination so that a appropriate glare is avoided. In fact, a suitable combination of general and local reduces glare to a very large extent. The questions that can be addressed are when is glare experienced? how can reflected glare be avoided, how can direct glare be minimized, what is VCP, what is glare index, what level of reflectance should be maintained for walls, ceiling and furniture, why should we have long and narrow windows, how can we minimize glare from windows, how can we minimize reflected glare, what are the factors that govern good general lighting what is localized lighting, what care should be taken for localized lighting, why is it important to have general lighting on all the time. Some of the questions which were asked in the last why are inductors preferred for use as ballast, they provide high starting voltage without undue loss of power. What is the disadvantage of using inductance as a ballast, how can it be rectified. The inductances have low power factor which is undesirable hence series capacitor or lead lag circuits are used for improving the power factor. What is the principle of operation of starterless circuit, what is its usefulness? They work on the principle of semi resonant circuits, they employ preheated element uh, filament electrodes which draw small amount of voltage, they are useful in smooth operation of discharge lamps at extreme cold conditions. What are switch type starters? 
They are bimetallic switches which are very commonly used, remain closed while starting and open upon heating when lamp glows. Thank you.